In this part, we'll get to know how to hold the pen in our hand and how to do exercises with them. And we will practice different kind of hatching and how to do them correctly. First off, we need to remember that holding your pen in your hand is very important. And I always put my pen's cap at the end of it. I'm usually holding a pen uh, 5 or 7 centimeter away from the tip. So what do I do that for? This will help us, uh, this is a 3 millimeter rapid and when I start drawing with 3 millimeter rapid, I go vertically and it will give you 3 millimeter. And if you put more pressure on it, it will give you up to 7 or 8 millimeter thickness. So when I hold my rapid from the end and hold my hand in this angle, which means I bring it bottom, I can reduce it even up to 5 millimeter. So look, there are two parameters that will help you have the right thickness. Basically your pen's thickness is one of the fundamentals that you need to observe in your sketchings. And then we ask, do we need to purchase eight different pens? So I will purchase a five or three millimeter pen and I will use the same pen for 0.5 millimeter down to 0.1 millimeter. You just need to control pen's pressure and your angle. So let's check these with each other that what pressure and angle will do. Look, I only want to change the angle of my hand. Look, our angle is vertical and I'll bring it down bit by bit, bit by bit. So our pen thickness with changing angle will change a lot. Now pay attention. This is the correct way to hold your pen and your two fingers just need to touch it slightly. Don't try to put too much pressure on your rapid. And as much as you put pressure on it, your thickness will increase. And as much as you decrease your pressure, the thickness will decrease. I will start from very low pressure and I will increase the pressure bit by bit. And as you can see, when we are increasing the pressure, the thickness of the lines will also change. And I can change the angle also. Look closely. I did it from 0.3 to 0.5 lines. We can do this with another rapid. So it's not about the type of rapid that you use. So don't think that the brand of my rapid is very important. So we can do this with any type of rapid. So now I will do this with another 3mm rapid from another brand. I'm going to do the same process again. Look closely. From very low pressure at the top. The pressure is very low and we will increase the pressure bit by bit. And the thickness of the line will increase. And I will change my angle a bit as well. And as you can see... I'm getting all different kind of thicknesses. Now, as you can see, my hand is sliding on the paper. I'm sliding my hand completely on the paper. You shouldn't put too much pressure on your hand when you're drawing, so your forearm can move around super easily. Don't limit yourself with how should I hold my pen. When you want to add a detail, you can rest your hand on the table. But when you want to draw a long line, you need to be able to slide your hand. So what will be our first practice? In our first practice, we need to try drawing lines with different thicknesses. With these two techniques. Change the pressure on pen. And hold it up. And control the angle. Basically, the pressure on the point and uh, the angle of our hand are two parameters that will define our line thickness. So, in order to start your training with this, try to start from different distances. You need to be able to draw the line from this side of the paper to the other side of the paper, straight and not wrinkled. 
If you put weight on your hand, this will happen. Which means when I'm drawing my line, it will get curved unwantedly. So look, you need to be able to slide your hand completely so you will not have any problems with these curves. And now, if you pay attention to the lines, I'm drawing very straight lines. Some believe that the line need to be wiggly and some believe that it needs to be sharp and very straight. Now I will illustrate for you guys and pay attention to my hand. I will draw some lines very wiggly and I will draw some of them very straight. And I'm repeating the same process. When we are working we need to control our hand completely that when we want our lines to be wiggly we can do it and when we want to straight we can do it. So controlling rapid in your hand is very important. So if I want to give you guys something to practice one of our exercises is hatching. Which means it's very important when you're working Whenever you want to do more practice, do some hatching. Hatching will help your lines to be more smooth and have more quality. At first practice, we will draw two straight lines with the same length of our paper. Very patiently, I'm starting hatching from top to bottom. And because the length of the line is very small, you can rest your hand on the table. So I'm hatching from top to bottom. And I'm using wiggly lines. Look, the tip can cross the line a bit. A mistake that can happen here is that when I'm hatching, some of my lines don't get to the end. This is our mistake. Or I do the hatching and they go inside each other. So you need to do this very orderly in the size of an A4 page or A3 page, so your hand will get used to it bit by bit. The second practice that we are going to do, I will do this personally myself a lot. I will draw a line from bottom to top and top to bottom, bottom to top. Look carefully. Your hand need to get used to in two ways, vertically from bottom to top and from top to bottom. So the second thing that I'm going to practice, I need to practice back and forth. So let's analyze some of the hatchings together. One thing that I need to tell you guys before that is some people believe that when you want to draw lines your paper need to be fixed to the table and you need to just glue it down and don't move the paper. Look closely because I will do them in all different angles. Those who say this probably didn't draw lines so much or they worked on just some few projects that they didn't get to this problem because i'm doing this for around 20 years there was a time that i was gluing my paper down and when two of my neck vertebrae moved and i had to do physiotherapy and i saw the result of my work i'm not forcing my students to glue down their paper when you're working you can rotate your page completely which means to draw the lines in any angle that it's easier for you guys. When you fix your paper, you need to move like this sometimes. This will put pressure on the neck and the pressure is too much. And when you're working, try to get closer to the edge of your desk. Don't rest too easily on your chair. This will reduce the amount of time you spend lining a bit by bit your spine and your neck vertebrae will get damaged. So I will try to stick to my desk, stick my stomach to desk and sit on the edge of my chair and not lean on it and not to bring down my neck too much when I'm lining and just try to peep. Old designing tables that in the past, for example when I was a student and now they are being used in architectural offices that are a little bit older is a little bit angled and they have good angle to draw them, even though that I can design much easier on a flat surface. 
So the second practice that we are going to do is in hatching practices, our second hatch will have much more speed. With more speed is like this. I'm moving from one side to the other very fast. And I need to consider the same principles here in order for my work to be clean and be very fast. So what happens here is I can rotate these hatches in all different angles, which means I will do 45 degree angle hatching. I can do the second hatching 45 degree to this angle. First hatching is on the top, 45 degree angle. Second hatching, I will rotate my page a bit and I will do 45 degree angle compared to the last one. So if I want to make it darker, I need to do vertically, which means 90 degree angle and mix them together, 245 degree and 190 degree. And the next hatching will be diagonal. In sketching, consider to how we want to do our shadings, we can use these four angles. Which means consider to our shadings from the light surfaces to the darker to the darker one, we can use this for hatching. This is a very useful hatching. And in our next project, uh, you can see how we can use these hatchings. So another way that we can do hatching is uh, hatching very fast and very smooth. Pay attention to the movement of my hand. My hand will rest like this from left to right. Here I can rest my hand or I can just slide it. It depends on how fast you move your hand. Now I will start hatching slowly and smoothly. And as you can see, I'm doing very smooth shadow, very light ones. And as much as you increase your hand's speed and decrease the pressure, your hatching will be better. Look at the result, it gave me a very unmixed hatching. Now I can do hatching with low pressure of my hand. And if you look how I'm holding my pen, I'm holding it from the very end. I'm not even putting so much pressure on it that the tip is not falling off. I can even say this uh, thickness of pen is less than 3 millimeter, 0.3 millimeter, it can be even 0.1 millimeter. So I'm putting very small pressure on my pen. And for our exercise, we can start making texture with this technique. So I'm starting hatching like this. And remember to rotate your page and use it whenever you want. Look, I'm rotating my page. Again, I'm doing it in another angle. So I'm using my hand's ability in this angle. I can do this vertically, like this. And don't tie yourself down to a specific way of hatching and you can move it anywhere that you like in any angle that you want. And try to make some shapes with it and volumes. What happens that these shapes uh, will make a topography for us and you can create stones and rocks and mountains with it. And you can use this as texture for your volumes. But you gotta learn how to do hatching correctly. And if your speed, your hand speed is 
slow, uh, your end result will not be pleasant. And if your hand's angle is not correct, again your end result will not be pleasant. And as you can see, I'm rotating my page in whatever angle that I want. Because if you place your hand like this, my hand cannot hatch like this. When I say you can't, I don't mean exactly. But like that, it's, you know, very hard. I can make some places darker and we can make some places lighter so we are giving it different textures. As you can see, it's just changing some angles and doing some highlights and changing shades we can have different surfaces. As you can see, I'm just creating a topography with just hatching like this. So these hatchings will help you a lot in your sketchings. And it's really helpful if you master this in showing your pattern and showing your shadows. And in contrast that you want to show. One of the ways that you can do rendering is rendering by hatching. And sometimes instead of using lots of colors, you can just do one color hatching. And as you can see, I'm creating my texture here. Next to our texture, I can create some simple things. Later on, we will practice more of this, but now I will just create some bushes around it. In the episode that I'm teaching stones, next episodes I will explain completely how you can place these hatchings in your stones I can make these areas a little darker do some more highlights and I will give more contrast to my work with this shadings so remember the important thing is for me to rest my hand like this and start moving. And as I said, if you are doing small lines, you can put more pressure on it. And if you are doing longer lines, you need to slide your hand alongside the page. In general, this will create a pattern for you guys. This will give us a topography and I can show some rocky landscape and get a different outcome from it.